Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going through a few SQL interview questions of different difficulties and how I would personally approach them. I haven't actually gone through any of these questions yet, so I guess we're going to be working them together in real time. No pressure at all. If you've seen any of my previous data science or SQL videos, you will know how much I stress the importance of this language. It is the universal tool to communicate with databases, meaning that if you are a data analyst, business analyst, engineer, or data scientist, or any hybrid role in between, you've got to know this language. And not to mention, it is also a key part of all job requirements and the interview process. I recently got a trial interview queries platform that has over 5,000 real interview questions from the biggest tech companies, including Netflix, Google, and Snapchat. They are a data science interview preparation platform in which you can write, test, and submit your own code, do live mock interviews, and also complete learning pathways on things like A-B testing, data engineering, and product metrics. If you are interested, I will leave a link down in my description box below. Enough talking for now, let's get straight into the video. So this question is a easy difficulty that was asked at an Amazon interview and it has a success rate of 49%. So we have to write a query to identify the manager with the biggest team size, assuming that there is only one manager with the largest team size. And we're given two tables, the employees table and also the managers table. And assuming the output should just be one record of the manager and their team size. I'm a very visual person, so I need to know what's inside each of these tables. So I'm just going to do a quick select statement just to see what is inside my employees table. Okay, so employees table contains employee ID, the name and manager ID. So assuming there's going to be some kind of left join together on these two tables, I'm going to assume we're joining on manager ID from this table equals the ID column of this table. So let's go ahead and say select all from employees. Let's alias this as E just because it's intuitive and then left join managers M. I like to indent my on just so it helps me make my code more readable. And let's go E dot manager underscore ID equals M dot ID. Let's go through and answer the actual question. So we need to figure out the manager with the biggest team size. So let's pull up the manager. So we need to get the manager name. So let's get manager dot name. So, and then let's count their team size by count distinct employee.id. So this should be counting how many employees are under each manager. And let's just name this as team size. Team underscore size, we need to group by manager.name. Sometimes I do group by one, but just I just find this easier for me to code, but it just means grouping by the very first record. So let me just test this code now and see what it's going to give us. So this should give us for every manager, how many people are, oh, what is this? Unknown column manager dot, ah, cause I named it M. Here we go. Let's try this again. So we have manager name by team size. All right. So this is what we want, but we want to get the manager with the largest team size. So I'm going to order my output by team size, but descending, so order by the second one. And then I'll show one record to get the top one. So I'll just go limit one to output the very top row. And if I run this again, oh, they want the column name to be named manager instead of name. So let me just rename this as manager. And then I'm going to submit the solution. Yeah, we've passed the test. This is the correct output and it's exactly what they wanted. And let's now move on to a different question. So this question has a difficulty level of heart and a success rate of 31% and it was asked in Amazon and Pinterest interviews. So we're given a table of product subscriptions with a subscription start date and end date for each user. We need to write a query that returns true or false, whether or not each user has a subscription date range that overlaps with any other completed subscription. Okay, so we have the user ID, the start date of their subscription and the end date of their subscription. So for user four, the expected output should be zero because their subscriptions in February and it overlaps with nobody. I believe this table needs some kind of self join onto itself in order to compare different user IDs with each other. So I'm going to label this table S1 and I'm going to left join onto itself S2 on this. So I'm going to go with S1 dot user ID is not equal to s2.user 
ID. So this should give us every single combination where the user IDs are not equal. So we have start date one, end date one, and then we have start date two and end date two. So for an overlap to happen, start date one needs to be between start date two and end date two. So it needs to be between, or the end date needs to be between, right? Yeah, that makes sense. So let's just test it out. So let's go with select s1.userID as the user ID, just because they want the output to have user ID. So let's go with this as the user ID. So I'm gonna go with case when, so if the start date, if the start date once so s1.start date, is between s2.start date and s2.end date or indent this so it lines up nicely or s1.end date is between these two start dates and end dates okay i think this is what we need to get done what I have to do is take a maximum of this case when statement I'm going to label it as, let's name it the overlap flag. And then I need to group by the user ID. Let me just run this code and see if it's what we want. This is actually quite a tricky, oh, this is nice. We got it right. Let's now go through their solution to see what they've done. Oh, that is also a lot of text. Um, I guess they just go through each of these conditions and think about the trigger. So they're also joining S1 with S2. They've named it the same way as well where user ID is not equal to user ID. Yep, so this is another way to do not equal. I'm just personally used to doing the this, but this works perfectly fine. Ah, they've done it on a left join, whereas I've done it in like a case when statement. They're doing the start date is less than the end date, but the end date is greater than the start date. That's another way to, I guess, calculate the overlap, but I feel like both methods work. So can take a look at this output and this is my solution, I guess. But yeah, let's move on to another question now. So this question is a hard question and it was asked at Deloitte and Netflix and Snapchat with a success rate of 36%. Need to write a query that for every single page, we have the percentage of users who are in the same postal code as that page. I'm gonna visualize it again. So select all from page sponsorships just to see what's in these tables. It's down here. So page sponsorships has page ID with postal code and price. We don't need price, do we? No, we don't. Recommendation has for every user, which pages they're being recommended. Uh, and the user has user ID with postal code. All right, so let's just assume that everything's gonna be joined together on, this one's gonna be page ID and page ID. And then this is gonna be user ID with this ID column. So I'm gonna alias page sponsorships as PS. I'm going to then left join onto recommendations. I'll call this R. You can do like as R or just R. It, it means the same thing. Um, and then I'm going to go on PS dot page ID equals R dot page ID. And then we're going to be doing left join users. Let's call this U on recommendations dot user ID equals u dot id. This should be the code to join all these tables together. But we want to get those where the users are in the same postal code as the page. So for each page, which is ps dot page id, I'm gonna do a, what do we need? We need the page. So they want this to be named as page. We also want the postal code, which is PS dot postal code. It's already named correctly. And then we need something called percentage, which is going to be a percentage of people who are in the same postal code as that page. Okay, so how many people are in the same postal code as that page? Let's do case when PS dot postal code equals user dot postal code because they both have the postal code field so let's do this so the case when when case when this is equal then let's do one else zero end 
So case one statements are going to be your best friend when you're working with SQL. It's pretty much like the if statement of Python. It's a really good way to create an indicator function for if it's this, then output this, else zero. Um, so let's do maximum and then I'm going to name this as number of overlaps. Let me just run this. Hang on, we've got to then group by one and two, grouping by the first two records. Let me run this code to see if it's what I'm after. So this should give me for every page postal code how many overlaps okay hang on not maximum it needs to be the sum i don't want the max i want the sum because the sum will then tell me exactly how many cases where they're equal okay perfect so we want um and then because we need it as a percentage we need to then divide it by how many other users are in total so i'm going to divide this through by count star which should be how many records exist so i'll name this as percentage and then let's test this code oh it's great okay so this is exactly what we're after let's also check out their solution just to see how different it is so they did this okay so very similar um i personally like to use left joins and i like to indent my ons and my commas because that way, I feel like if you've ever watched my SQL tips and tricks video, you will know that this is how I structure my code all the time. Reason being, I like to have my commas line up so I can easily just hit comment through if I don't want to have a variable. Whereas if I had like a comma afterwards, I would have to reshuffle all my commas, which I don't like doing. And I like to line them up so I know exactly where my variables are and every single left join has an indent. And I like to keep all these, what are these words called? I have no idea, but select case when's from i like to capitalize them and have everything else as lowercase because it just helps me make my code a bit more readable so that is all that i have for today's video i hope that you enjoyed going through these three interview questions together and you learned something if you have any other suggestions or differing opinions as to how to solve these particular questions please leave them down in the comments below and as always i will see you in my next video bye